This can get you killed in Iran. Do you know her name? Say her name. Mahsa Amini. Mahsa Amini. She was only 22 years old. Gina was her Kurdish name. She came from Saqqas, her city, to Tehran. She was not even unveiled. Her hair was not fully covered, which the Iranian government says, put your hair, put your headscarf properly. She got arrested. After two hours, they gave her dead body to her family. But Mahsa Amini is not dead for millions of Iranians. She became a symbol of resistance. She became a symbol of fighting back, not the government, the religious dictatorship in the region. For years and years, we have been warning the rest of the world about the dangers of hijab police, about the danger of compulsory hijab. We have been ignored. Mahsa needed to be killed. Now the whole world knows her name. But let me tell you something. When she got arrested in Tehran, she told the hijab police, I don't have anyone here in Tehran. I just came from Saqqaz. And I don't have anyone here. Let me go. Nah. Everyone knows Mahsa. She's not alone. These young women, they chanted that we are all Mahsa. They took to the street because they were angry. They started to burn their headscarves, to cut their hair, and chanting, Zan Zendegi Azadi. It means women, life, freedom. What was the result? They all got killed. Look at their faces. They all got killed just because of peacefully chanting that we want to have freedom and dignity. We want to choose what we want to wear. For years and years, the Iranian regime used men and tell our brothers, our fathers, that in the name of honor, if your sisters, your mothers, your daughters, your girlfriends are not fully covered, kill them. These men, instead of killing their daughters, sisters, their mothers, their girlfriends, they got killed because of taking to the streets, because of supporting Iranian women, because of chanting Zan Zendegi Azadi. These young people, girls and boys, shoulder to shoulder, they are taking to the streets, risking their lives because they want to say no to religious dictatorship. Who killed them? Just look at their faces. They don't even look like Iranian people. They're coming from, they're backward mullahs. But they are telling us what to wear, what kind of lifestyle to follow, and what kind of belief that we can have. The supreme leader of Iran came on TV today. He put the blame on me, on you, on everyone in the West. Why? Because for years and years, I have been telling that compulsory hijab is not just a small piece of cloth. Compulsory hijab is like the Berlin Wall. If men and women get successful to tear this wall down, then the religious dictatorship won't exist. This is going to be an end for the Islamic Republic. That is scares them. That is scares them. <laughs> My heart is broken. Not just because of looking into the eyes of young women getting killed. Not just because of looking into the eyes of young men getting killed. I cannot look into the eyes of Western female politicians. My heart is broken because of their ignorance. Four years ago, I was in the same stage calling all the female politicians around the world that look at these women. They're facing guns and bullets. They're saying no to compulsory hijab. But these female politicians, they went to Iran. They wore hijab. 
they bow to our oppressors. Right now, women are facing guns and bullets, but none of this made video to make an apology to Iranian women. None of them cut their hair. None of them burned headscarf. They think that they might cause Islamophobia. As a woman who grew up in Iran, under Sharia law, I have the right to be scared of Islamism. In Iran, I was told if I show my hair, I go to jail, I get lashes, I get killed like Mahsa Amini. In the West, by them, I was told that if I share my stories, I will cause Islamophobia. Yes, I am scared of Islamic ideology. Women of Afghanistan, they are scared of Taliban. We are scared of Islamic Republic. And I am not here to ask you, the Western female politician, to save us. I am here to save you from your misunderstanding of our culture. I'm here to ask you stop saving the Islamic Republic. Right now that I'm talking to you, the West is going to have a deal with the Iranian regime. But Iranians are dealing with the killers and murderers. Today, as I said, I am not here to ask the Western country to save Iranian people. Iranian women are bra brave enough, even the teenagers, even the TikTok generation. They make video, they go to the street, they show that they might not be able to go back home. They can save Iran. They are there to save the whole world from Islamism. I am here to ask the Western country Stop negotiating with our murderers. Stop saving the murderers of Iran. Stop legitimizing Taliban. Stop legitimizing the Islamic Republic. The true feminists, the true feminists are not here in West. The true feminists are in Afghanistan, being abandoned by all the feminist, global feminist movement around the world. One feminist, this young Kurdish girl, her mother got killed. Minu Majidi, her crime was protesting against the brutal death of Mahsa Amini. Do you see her crying? No. She turned her pain to power. She turned her pain to anger. She's facing the killers in this picture. And look at her hand. She's holding the hair that she cut from her head. How many of you, how many of you before coming here, you use your mirror, you look into yourself, your eyes to make yourself beautiful? How many of you, hands up, how many of you love your hair? How many of you use mirror to make yourself beautiful? For 40 years, we use mirror to make ourselves the one that the government of Iran wants us to be. For 40 years, we, the women of Iran and Afghanistan, use the mirror to make ourselves what Taliban and Islamic want us to be. For 40 years, all the Western female politicians, they went to my country. They obeyed Taliban and Islamic Republic. They covered their hair. They legitimized my murderer. I named them. Federico Mogherini, Catherine Ashton, Segolan Royal. Shame on you. Shame on you. I'm not only putting the blame on the Islamic Republic and Taliban killing my women in Iran and Afghanistan. All the Western female politicians who obeyed compulsory hijab law ignored us, called us the agent of CIA, agent of Saudi Arabia, agent of MI6, agent of President Trump. They are responsible because I'm a woman from the Middle East. I'm not agent of anyone. I have agency. <laughs> Thank you so much. Solidarity is beautiful, but solidarity itself is not enough. Look at China, Russia, Iran. 
Dictators around the world are more united than us. This is the time. If we freedom fighters do not get united to end Islamism, to end dictatorship, believe me, dictators will get united to end us and democracy. Today, enough to victimize ourselves. Today, it's enough to cry for justice. We have to take action. We have to take action. I want to call on you, every single of you, freedom fighters. We need a political movement. United Nation is useless. They gave a seat to Islamic Republic, top women body. To ma Iran has a top seat on Women's Council to monitor human rights, women's rights globally. Putin, Russia has a seat at the United Nation to monitor human rights globally. Maduro, Saudi Arabia, now Cuba. I'm calling on you, me, Leopoldo, and Gary Kasparov. We have been talking month and month that we can have our own alternative United Nation. Those who are not being heard in United Nation, we must get united and make democratic countries to recognize our voice, to take a strong action. I'm going to call Leopoldo Lopez and everyone who wants to be united with Iranians, come here on a stage and show your solidarity. <laughs> Syria, China, Zimbabwe, Hong Kong, Russia, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Syria. This is the time to get united. Our dictators are more united than